Hi, I'm Lois Fogel Sharp. Today's episode 15 of What Does God Think? And it's What Does God Think About Stealing? So, Father, we come to you. I ask your Holy Spirit to teach us today. Show us your word of truth. And we thank you for these episodes. Because everything you do, Holy Spirit, is to help us be the children of God. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name. First of all, in order to understand what does God think about stealing, what does stealing mean? I mean, most of us think they know what it means, but let me give you the dictionary meaning of stealing. Take without the owner's consent. That's to steal. And when somebody does that, they're called a thief. A thief is a person who steals from people, stores, things, things that don't belong to them. Some say there's justification when someone will go into a store and steal something because technically it's a business. So they, they, they use little, uh, you know, excuses to justify stealing when stealing we know is not justified in the word of God. All right. Exodus 20, 15. It's the eighth commandment. Thou shalt not steal. All right. So it was given by God himself to Moses to give to the people. Do not steal. You're not allowed to steal. Now, I want to read to you John 10, 10. Starting at verse 7. Because... We have to recognize where stealing comes from in order to, us to get some understanding of our lives and, you know, how the enemy might attack us in certain areas. We have to recognize where, where do these things come from? We know stealing is against God, so he doesn't like stealing. So it's not something that he would move us to do, is it? But let's see where, what it's all about, stealing. All right, John 10, 10. I'm going to start with verse 7. And this is Jesus talking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All right, we know he's the door. Without the Lord, we can't get in. He opens the door. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Who's the thief? The devil. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that's a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling means he's not the shepherd. He's the man that was hired to watch the sheep. So when the wolf comes, he doesn't really care about the sheep. He's leaving because he's not going to get eaten by the, the wolf. So he cares not for the sheep, but I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I'm known of mine. That would be those that love Jesus with all that they are. We're the sheep. We're the body of Christ. We're the bride. All right, we're the army, we're the servants. As the father knows me, even so I, the father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. All right, he's talking to the Jewish people at that time. There are other sheep that I have that are not of this fold. Listen to this, this is powerful stuff. The only reason I'm reading this whole thing is because it's so powerful. All right. I have other sheep, not of this fold, but I must bring them 
and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd, Jew and Gentile together, those that love Jesus, those that have accepted Jesus as the Lord of their lives and recognize Jesus as Messiah. We're of the same fold and one shepherd. We come from different, well, different folds, I guess. They're Jewish. We're Gentiles. But he reached out to us and brought us in and we become one fold then. All right. One fold and one shepherd. Therefore, does my father love me because I laid down my life and I might take it up again? No man takes it from me, but I laid it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. That's some heavy stuff. You should go read it. Read the whole thing. John 10, 10. It's amazing. Well, well, John 10, read the whole thing. John 10, because what it's actually saying there, it talks about the devil being the thief. He comes to steal, to kill and destroy. All right. Jesus talking about the sheep. There's one fold of sheep and then there's another fold of sheep. He reaches out to both and brings them together as one body. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that's what we are. This is how powerful this stuff is. And we live lives of being followers of Christ. So we don't steal, we don't kill, and we don't try to destroy anybody. I'm going to say that again. We don't steal. We don't go out to kill anybody. And we don't look to destroy anybody. Anybody looking to destroy anybody is not of the fold. Let's say that again. Anybody out there on the internet, and all take heed to these words, who is looking to destroy anybody is not of the fold. Because that's the symptoms and personality of the devil. So don't forget that. So if you see anybody out there putting some of the people down, calling them false prophets, demeaning them, mocking them, making up lies about them, they are looking to destroy and they are not from the Lord. You know them by their fruit. That is not the fruit of the, of the, of the Lord, but the devil. So let's go on, okay? In Exodus 22, I'm going to read you something. Because this is pretty, pretty uh, amazing. All right. I wrote it down, so I don't need to read from there. Exodus 22, 1 through 15, it says this. The thief was required, somebody that stole something was required to pay restitution. In other words, you have to pay back something for what you did. Often, double the amount or even more than double the amount back after they stole something. So even way back, there was issues with stealing that people did. And when they got caught, they had to pay back. Then there was a thing said by Moses that if a person came to your house at night and they came to steal something, because it was dark and you couldn't see and couldn't deal with it, you were allowed to kill them. And the blood blood was able to be shed, it said. But if it was during the daytime, they were not to be killed. They were to be taken and then have to pay restitution for what they did. Because that was really what was meant to happen when somebody stole something. They had to pay it back. They weren't allowed to just get off free and clear. But if it was done at night when you can't see and you don't know what's going on, you and you had to protect what you had is that's yours, blood could be shed, it said. So they had they had things that were put out by God to follow back then. They were the laws given, all right? Proverbs 6. 30 through 31 says this. 
I'm not sure which ones I marked, which ones I just wrote down. All right, I do have it down. Problem six. Listen to this. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. Hmm. But if he is found, he shall still restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. <laughs> so if a person steals because they're hungry from someone, they have to give back sevenfold. And even if they have to give back everything that they have from their own household, they were required to do that. But it says there that there was a little bit more mercy and understanding for someone who steals because they're hungry. Now, there are things going on today in our society where they just break into stores and take everything that they have for their own self-gain. And of course, they make it, oh, well, they have nothing, they're poor, and this and that, and this and that. That's, that's half the time, that's just an excuse. But if someone is starving and walks into the, a, a store and takes a candy bar or a cookie or a piece of some bread or something because they're hungry and they're starving, there should be some kind of compassion for that. Because even the heart of God sees the soul of that person and where they're coming from and why they did what they did. So, again, who's the judge of these things? <laughs> God's the judge. He sees the heart and he sees the reason why. But stealing? What does God think of stealing? Thou shalt not steal. Because even if you steal, if you're hungry, <laughs> restitution is involved in it. All right? I'm going to read this Leviticus. This is also very good. Leviticus 19, 11 through 13. Let's see what it says here. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. So Levit Leviticus is telling us there, you not don't steal and don't rob your neighbor. I know stories, true stories of people reaching out to someone who is going through some hard times and allowing them to live with them in their house for a time till they can get on their feet. And you know what they did? <laughs> they robbed them. They robbed them in the very place where they were getting refuge from the cold and from their nothingness. That's not a good thing. It's like, what do you say? Don't bite the hand that feeds you. If you bite the hand that feeds you, it's not going to feed you anymore. Because it's not going to be stupid enough to reach out again and get bitten. I remember when I was a kid. And that's kind of like exactly what happened to me. I was sitting on the couch one day. I get, I was sick, I think. I, don't, I wasn't feeling well. And I was eating on the couch. And I had food in my hand. And we had gotten a puppy. We ended up not keeping the puppy because it ended up, it was vicious. It came up to me while I was sitting there with the food. And jumped up and bit my hand. Literally bit my hand because it was looking for the food. I cried my eyes out 
because I couldn't understand why this puppy that I loved so much would bite me like that. It was vicious. It's like the whole story that Trump tells about the snake. You took me in, you took me in. The person helped the person, the, the, the snake. And then in the end, the snake bites the person. It was venomous. And the person's like, why did you bite me? I took you in, I helped you. Well, you knew I was a snake when you took me in. That's where we have to have wisdom. You don't take a thief into your house. Because they're a thief. We can have compassion, but we have to have wisdom behind it. And we have to be very cautious when people have these issues. When you know somebody's a thief, keep your eyes on them because they will steal from you. Absolutely. If they get the opportunity and they see you're not looking, they will nab something from you. I've had it done to me. I've had people come in over the years. You know, we, we had church services in our house at times, you know, and the money basket was right there on one of the tables. And the person I knew was a thief. Walked right over to the basket and was standing right there. Just waiting for the moment to put the hand in and grab a couple bucks. And I had my eye on them. And they weren't going to do it while, while my watch was on. I mean, we helped the needy anyway, everywhere we went. <laughs> so if anybody had, had a need, all they had to do was ask us for help. And we would help them. But the point is, a thief is a thief. And they take what they can. And they don't care that God says, thou shalt not steal. It is what it is. It's what we deal with in this world. There's a lot of things we deal with in this world. Watching thieves is one of them. All right. First Corinthians 6, 10. nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Thieves. They're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. If you start at nine, it talks about the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortionists shall enter the kingdom of God, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Such as some were you, he said. You are washed and you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So, what did you say there? You could have been a thief. You could have been a drunkard. All right? You could have been any one of those things. Learned about Jesus, that he washed you free from your sins, and decided to become a follower of Christ. So, just because you were a thief, just because you were a drunk, or just because you were this or were that, it doesn't mean you can't get saved. So there's always salvation. That's why we're not the judge. We're the ones to just lead people to the truth. So thieves, those that steal, can come to Christ. Absolutely. And, and get set free. But once you come to Christ and you know that he died for your sins, that doesn't give you license to go back and continue to sin. What you do then is you lay your life down 
and you leave the past behind you and you move forward in the future with Christ and you see what he does and what doors he'll open for you because he's the Lord God. <laughs> so Proverbs 10, 10 says, become not vain in robbery. Again, stealing. Become not vain in it. In other words, don't let it be your thing. Vanity, vanity. Wrapped up in self. It's what I do. It's what I want to do. We see these movies, right, about thieves and, oh, yeah, they're the guy. He always hits the jewelry, you know. He goes in and he's, he steals the diamonds. That's his uh, profession. We don't make a profession in stealing. We're not supposed to steal any way, anyhow. So, what about all the stealing going on today? The stealing of the elections. <laughs> the cheating. Cheating is the same thing as stealing, you know. So, if you're a cheater, you play a game with somebody and you cheat to win... You basically stole it, didn't you? Because you didn't really win. It's the same thing in an election. If they're cheating so they can win, they didn't really win, did they? They stole it away. And who's the thief? The devil. So if somebody is a thief and a robber and steals in any way, they take they take it on the personality of Satan. And what does God think of that? He doesn't like it <laughs> very much at all. It's not his will. And it's not something he would like for us to do. Why? Because it's not honest. All the things that he says the person are the personalities of Satan. All right. Luke 23, 43. The two thieves on the cross, they were put to death by crucifixion. One thief is coming against Jesus, saying things. And the other thief steps in and says, we belong here. This man did nothing. Stop saying what you're saying. And what did Jesus say to him? He forgave him right there on the spot, didn't he? So today, I assure you, you will be with me in paradise because he asked Jesus to save him, basically. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. So right there shows forgiveness. There's forgiveness for everything. There's only one sin. That's the unpardonable sin. And it's so powerful and so almost impossible to do. I'm not going to get into that now. But most the average people average people don't do that because they don't they don't even understand it. So the Holy Spirit showing us different things here. All right. Why was it such an important thing to put in the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Because God was putting out his laws and what he says is right and what he says is wrong. So if we don't use this, what are we following? We're following our own will and what we want justified and what we don't want justified. And that's dangerous. 
The Constitution of the United States of America was based on the Bible. <laughs> Everyone has the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Everyone. We have the right to believe what we want to believe. And nobody can come and tell you you can't. People have freedom to choose. You could choose to go and steal every day if you want. You'll get caught eventually by the police. Especially when law and order come back to this country. A lot of them are going to be getting caught. They're not going to be running into stores anymore, breaking things and just taking what they want. It's going to be stopped. Because it's against the law of our land. So always keep things in prayer. Make sure you follow Jesus. Don't listen to the devil. Because sometimes I guess stealing can be tempting. Especially the children. They go in and they see a candy bar and they want it. I told you my story. I, t I stole twice in my life. <laughs> Two little toys they were. And I got, I got caught by my mom and I had to walk it back and bring it back and be humiliated. And handing it back. The other one, she never caught me. But every time I took that little toy out, I felt convicted. Because I knew I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> We're kids and we learn, right? We're adults and we learn too. We're supposed to be matured into Christians who are loving, caring, gentle, non-judging, just filled with love, love for one another, and always looking to reach out and help each other. So I hope you got something from this. We live and we learn. And if you have a problem with stealing, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus because a lot of that stuff can become demonic if it's something you can't control. So we bind the enemy and his trying to dump his personality on us in the name of Jesus. I pray for peace and for all God's people to be set free and to walk with him in harmony. So I'll be back with the next episode, episode 16 it'll be. And I'm not sure what it is yet, so it'll be underneath the title or whatever, wherever Gary puts it to let you know what next week's going to be. I'll be back when he sends me back again and have a blessed day.